Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about the bone tumors and the tumor-like lesions. There are two kinds of tumors, you all know, benign and malignant. But the primary bone tumors are of three categories. Cartilage forming, those with the formation of hyaline cartilage. Bone forming, those that produce unmineralized osteoid and mineralized woman bone. And the unknown origin one. So, these are the names of the benign one and the malignant one. Let's begin with the benign bone tumors first. Benign bone tumors are asymptomatic. They're usually asymptomatic and they are most common in males with the male to female ratio of 3 into 1 and they occur in late teens or 20s. So if there is a patient, an old patient with a bone tumor, so it's most likely to be the malignant one. The benign bone tumors, they do not invade local structures, they do not destroy the cortex or invade the growth plate. So the first one is the osteochondromas. This is actually the most common benign bone tumor, the osteochondroma, and uh, it primarily occurs in the males age 20s. They present as exostosis and either sessile without stock or pedunculated with stock. They are actually of, you may remember of it uh, as like it's a tree with a little branch or a stalk here. Yeah. So this is what, what osteochondromas look like on the, even on the x-ray. So uh, the osteochondromas grow out of the endochondral tissue at the metaphases, especially at knee. They are actually the bone tumor with an overlying cartilage cap. So histologically, you can see a clear cartilage cap. They are slow growing mass, usually painless, but they can be painful if they impinge on nerve or if, they, if the stalk is fractured or if there is trauma. So, uh, there are two basically types of osteochondromas, the solitary one and the multiple one. So, the solitary one are less likely to transform into the chondrosarcoma, but there is another type that is the multiple hereditary exostosis. It is 15% and it is apparent during childhood and the underlying bones are bowed and shortened in it and they, they, they are more likely to progress into the chondrosarcoma. What is the pathogenesis of the osteochondroma? Basically, osteochondromas, in osteochondroma, there is the loss of function mutations in either the XT1 or EXT2 gene and the loss of remaining uh, the allele of the chondrocytes of the bone plate. So the reduced expression of the EXT1 or the EXT2 gene is um, also observed in the sporadic type. It actually occurs in both the sporadic and the uh, multiple one. So these genes encode the what, what's the what is the function of these genes ext1 and ext2 gene actually they encode enzymes that synthesize the heparin sulfate glycosaminoglycans and the reduced or abnormal glycosaminoglycans prevent the normal diffusion of the hedgehog factors and thereby disrupting the chondrocyte differentiation and the skeletal development. So this was the pathogenesis and this was the osteochondroma. So after osteochondroma, let's talk about the chondroma. Chondroma is actually the benign tumor of hyaline cartilage that usually occur in bones of the endochondral origin. They arise in medullary cavity and then it is called the endochondroma and if it arises in the cortical surface then it's called the juxtamedullary chondroma. So the chondroma affect men and women equally and the most common it occurs in the adolescents and the, the most common affects the bones of the hands and feet. So what is the pathogenesis of the chondroma? Let's talk about that. Uh, it is actually the heterozygous gain of function mutations in the IDH1 and the IDH2 genes that encodes for the enzymes isocitrate dehydrogenases. And uh, this is actually um, isolated or identified from the syndromic as well as solitary endochondromas. Solitary one that occurs alone and the syndromic with many other symptoms as well. So uh, the mutations that um, confer a new enzymatic activity on the IDH proteins, uh, it actually leads to the synthesis of 2-hydroxyglutarate. This 2-hydroxyglutarate is actually an oncometabolite that interferes with the regulation of DNA methylation and it is also implicated in the other tumors like the glial tumors and the um, acute myeloid leukemias. So this was all about the chondroma. So the bone forming um, benign tumors include the osteoid osteoma and the osteoblastoma. 
Osteoid osteoma is actually a benign tumor of osteoblasts that produce osteoid and is surrounded by a rim of reactive bone. The size of it is less than 2 cm in diameter. They are common in males age 20s. They arise in the cortex of the long bones, especially femur. And the important symptom in it is the nocturnal bone pain that results with the aspirin or NSAID. The morphologic feature includes that they are composed of well-defined hemorrhagic tan tissue and um, their uh, microscopic structure shows haphazardly interconnecting trabecular of the woven bone that is actually rimmed by the prominent osteoblasts. So the x-ray uh, display a radiolucent area surrounded by the bright sclerotic ring of the reactive cortical bone. Osteoblastoma comparatively, it is similar to osteoid osteoma. Um, basically, the osteoid osteoma and osteoblastoma, they are, uh, they have similar histologic features, but they differ clinically and radiographically. So the osteoblastoma is larger, matlab it's uh, greater than two centimeter in diameter. It arises in vertebrae, and the bone pain does not respond to the aspirin. <coughs> Osteoblastomas may actually, uh, they may eventually um, become the large tumors large enough to cause the spinal cord compression. So this was all about the bone forming tumor. Next is the those tumors of the unknown origin and that contains only one giant cell tumor of bone. Giant cell tumor of bone, it is actually, it is named because the, it is a tumor that is comprised of the multinucleated giant cells and the stromal cells. It occurs in the young females of 20 to 40 years and they arise in epiphyseal epiphases of the long bones like the distal femur or the proximal tibia, mainly the knee region. The x-ray shows the soap bubble appearance and they are locally aggressive. So that was all about the benign bone forming tumors.